Hey guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company. I normally do uh, 1UZ conversions and wiring. Today we're setting up an aftermarket computer. We're using a link, and I'm going to show you how to do a spark test. This one's actually been set up with individual coils, and I, I have been hoping to do one with a normal standard type ignition with leads, distributor caps, but we have to work with what we've got. The principle is still the same. So we're working with this 1UZ here, wired up, ready to go, on a G4 Extreme. We have eight individual coils on it. In this case, I have got the coils unplugged at this point in time. They are they're just sort of sitting in place. I've got this nifty little spark tester. These are great little units. I'm going to give it a gap like that. I'm going to go into number one. And just a, a real quick hint, check the spark before you check the fuel. Because you, if you've got fuel in the engine and you pop some spark up it, you'll have combustion and you might burn your, the hairs off your legs. Or pop your ear, but ears. We're going to connect to the ECU, like so. We're going to go to the ignition system, ignition setup, ignition main. This one no longer has a twin distributor. Direct spark. That should be good. We're going to check the dwell table as well. I think that dwell table is a little bit high, so I'm going to drop the dwell table for G4 Plus platform. We'll just get rid of that. We'll grab it out of the G4 Plus. Under base maps, there should be our teaser link. Here's a plug-in. And ignition, well control. I'm just going to export that out there. And we're going to bring it in here. So there's some new new numbers. I'm going to store that into the ECU. Now what we will have is all the ignition outputs should read coil. I have to do a reset. We're just going to recycle this ECU. I've taken off the ignition. So we're just going to cycle the power to this ECU. We'll go back in. And you see when we've come back in, all the auxiliary outputs, ignition auxiliary outputs, are now ignition. When you're wiring these up, if you're doing individual cylinders, you wire it to each individual cylinder as per numbered. So drive one goes to cylinder one, drive two goes to cylinder two. That might sound funny, but in the past, sometimes you had to wire them to firing order, but in the link, wire them to cylinder order. If you're doing group, then you wire number one to number one, and it's pair, one, eight, four, three, six, and then you wire the second one in the firing order as the second group. Okay, so uh, one eight, so eight and its pair is the second and, and so forth through the group. All right, now I'm actually going to do a test on that. So I have my spark tester set up. Come into here. I go uh, ignition test. Ignition number one on. 
and we have spark. We turn that off. It didn't like me. We're just going to turn that off. What it did there is because I've got a heap of EMF floating around here, it decided to lock me out. When it's going through a spark plug, make sure they're a resistor spark plug and you won't have that problem. One thing I've also done on this one is I've added a suppressor to the coil circuit to the power feed. So it's mounted up here at the moment. Oh, it's probably not very tight, that wouldn't be helping. The goal is actually that it'll be mounted in the manifold under the, in the plenum so you won't see it and it's just got a plug coming out and that helps with that interference and static back going to back to the radio um, and the g4 pluses don't generally have the problem either because i didn't store that setting by just turning the power off it um, reset it and back to Default of off. Right, we'll do number three cylinder next. Same deal, it logged me out. But that's working. And basically what I'll do is go through each one. So normally you will turn them off and you just move to the next one. Um, what I can do here, we'll actually just plug it in and we'll make sparks in the engine. So we'll do number five. And you can just hear that ticking along. And then we turn it off. We'll do number seven. And that one's going. We'll turn that off. So that's a really, really simple test to do. I'm going to go through and do the other four on the other side. Um, and so if you're not too certain, or you've done a tricky one, if I'm sending it out to a customer, I often go through and check every single one. Um, though, often I'm firing them up, firing the engines up. So I kind of know when it runs that it's got spark where it's meant to be firing spark. But it's a really neat test really simple and if you're just learning it's good to go through those basics so you get them right so i hope that's helpful and we'll talk to you later